the cloud. Yeah, so we are now recording the class. So in general, uh, try to, I mean, to learn more, go this for geek for geeks and try to learn more problems. These are very nice set of things and this will help you. That's both algorithmically, you become a stronger and pro like you can write a smarter program. If you want to go for interview, for internship, for job, for everything, you become much more, I mean, uh, like uh, actually, uh, better in those things. And some of them actually I have done it and they have, because there are some of the basic problem. I have done some research papers even based on those problems because I saw that, oh, this is an interesting thing. And maybe I didn't know that. How, how can I improve this one essentially a little bit better? These are some of them are good essentially, like Fourier transfer. Like I actually, I knew about the ideas, but geek for geeks, I could actually see the code and see the exact thing. So that's a very good one. Go to that and like lit code and again hacker rank, but especially geek for geeks or lit code, these are good ones to learn lots of these things. I try to do that, that improves your US surely, make you the best for all things. Uh, interviews, jobs, if you want to do graduate uh, studies or anything. Uh, one more is important that I mentioned, I'm teaching a game theory course as well. And this is a, uh, like algorithms course. Uh, whenever I think uh, this is important, we try to work in uh, algorithm to make the, the thing that we have with the computer program more efficient. In game theory, we will consider the games. And uh, this is important that uh, when you, in the real life, you will use this course. And these are like very, I will say that it's actually maybe more a philosophy, but these are the courses that I use a lot in my life. And I think you can use it because algorithm is a faster way, more efficient way of doing some task. You can think about that this way, lots of tasks that you are doing during life and how can you make them more efficient? So this course, I would say is beyond this class. It is for your life. Or like the game theory course that I'm teaching is that you will consider the whole world as a game. The game is everyone has these are the different people that they have their own incentives. If you see that this is somehow actually this is next level of this algorithm, you are thinking that like you want to do some task and all of these guys are some dumb object in some sense. Not I mean dumb, but if you say go from here to here, then they will go there. In the game theory, when you do it, it's a bit next level. He said that, no, these are the people in the queue. I want to sort them according to something, but I cannot say, yes, I have some objective function. Oh, there are some people in the queue. I say, oh, I have some objective function. Something would be very efficient. If you, that you are at the beginning of the queue, go to the end of the queue. Then this does not happen because these people, these are the people, they have incentive. Yeah, you want to do it, do it. But why should I lose my spot in the beginning of the thing? I don't care whatever you are having. Why? Because these are the people that now you are working with them. These are also smart people. These are uh, somehow selfish agents that they try to maximize for themselves. So in some sense, this algorithmic game theory is the next level of algorithms that you may consider it when you are dealing with the people that each of them have their own incentives. These are the things that you can actually use it in life to make your life actually is a, I mean, different level. As I mentioned, the technology, we should try to use it and not try to prevent it to be used. And the same thing also here, think about this one for your life. If you see, then you will see that what I'm talking about. I mean, it is sometime, of course, it is. Uh, you need to be careful. Sometimes uh, you may have a bad feeling. So if you understand everything, uh, uh, not everything, if you understand more, you may suffer more. That is also the correct thing. So if you don't maybe understand what the game is going on, then you maybe say, okay, everything is fine. And uh, But if you know that what are the incentives behind this thing that the people are working, that actually the life might be worse for you. I can tell you that sometime I will see the, if I see the whole game that somebody is playing the game, the others, they don't talk about it. And they feel bad. I understand this guy, I mean, is playing the game. And I can't see what are the moves that this guy is doing. I, because I see the whole world as a game, then I can't say what are the moves, what are the next moves. But this is some suffering as well. Maybe if you don't understand it, it's better. But yeah, you will choose essentially, you want to have this concept of knowledge. So just think about it, if you could, uh, see any two people that they are talking with each other, you can see what they are talking with each other. 
So this is a very good knowledge. You can have lots of information. Maybe you can see, I mean, what will happen in the stock market or you can be, become wealthy. At the same time, some of them might be not good because the people may talk about you and you don't hear it so that you are fine and they don't talk in front of you. But if you know what the people talk about you, the back of you and you see that, then you may become frustrated. The same thing that is the case that if you know about the world, you see that the game, you try to use the algorithm, it's, you can do more efficiently something, but you can suffer sometimes because you will see what are the incentives behind this. But anyhow, I think this is the thing that you should choose. Always, I will go for more knowledge. Yes, it might be more suffering at some point, but I think that is the destiny that I will choose for myself. And I think this is something that you can also uh, do that. That generally means, I mean, I would say more smartness, more thinking in life. But yeah, there are some sometimes more suffering as well. Because you can see some of these things at the games and then we'll see the real incentive is not the one that the people talk about. It. The real incentive is something else. Good. Uh, and this, I think that was the important thing that you will know about this class. I think the class, I will teach it not for this class. I think you will get it much beyond that. Efficient design of, the, and the, uh, this is an algorithm, a step by step of doing something. How can I decide about the steps such that I have a more efficient way of doing this task? You can do it in your life. Great. Okay. <clears throat> Any uh, questions from? <clears throat> So uh, what did we talk so far? So, so far we talk about, we started, we talk about big O notation, that's the important thing. We talk about induction to prove algorithms, like especially this is the, this algorithm you can think almost anything, there are some conditions, if conditions that you will put it. And the other only things is you have it is the loop or while loop. So in some sense, uh, that's also, that was something that I was thinking about it, I was talking actually with my, son or my daughter, I want to teach them about programming. And this was the idea that sometimes while is the only thing that you need to have it because it has both if conditions and the loop essentially. You can say for it is very similar as well. But while generally that you have almost in all, in every language, you have it in Python, you can have it in uh, C++ or Java or anything. It has all the things. It has some if conditions and some loop. So that's almost everything that you have it. Of course you have functions, but the functions are just some piece of code that you will put it as just function. It is instead of copy pasting it, you are just defining it and use it. So, and in some sense, while is the main things that induction works. That you will go there. Whenever you have a while, you want to say something works that you are using induction. However, you can also use induction somehow or induction ideas to design algorithms the whole algorithm itself. Again, at the end, it will go to the loop, but uh, here sometimes you have the while loop, you want to say that it works. Sometimes you want to think about it inductively and create that loop from the induction. We talk about these approaches in the past two, three sessions. Uh, and uh, so uh, that's actually a uh, way that we discussed. So in some sense, use induction to prove something works or use induction ideas or induction thinking to design the algorithm. You can go either way. Here, we will talk about the recur uh, recurrence relations. Recurrence relations is another thing that also algorithmically, uh, like induction also comes and play a very important role in algorithm design. Why? Because induction is uh, uh, recursive things are generally uh, these essentially induction things. Why when you, uh, this is, uh, I think a big chunk of, uh, like if we talk about lots of greedy algorithm, we talk about different design algorithm, the greedy algorithm, dynamic programming, or even uh, you will think about it, uh, backtracking, all of them in some sense are, or branch and bound, all of them are based on this idea of recursive things. And recursive actually is the induction that you will start with some case to solve this problem. You may use this function again, but this function, some parameters have been reduced. This is exactly this concept of a strong induction that we were talking before. Some parameters have been reduced. It means that say, some of these parameters in general came down. 
Or is it like the idea that I mentioned for uh, generally, if you want to solve some formula, uh, you try to, that was induction. You have some base cases. Base cases are the parts that you don't do any recur recursion. You say that if this condition and this condition, this is my solution. I don't need to do rec recursion. That's very important. You should have in all recursive function, you should have this step. Uh, if else, I will just reduce some other cases that I solved it, and that those cases, I'm just using induction essentially. Inductively, they are giving me the correct solution. So if these are giving the correct solution, then I can compute the correct solution in this. This would be essentially the backtracking algorithms. In the dynamic programming, as I mentioned, that when you compute some of this, you may also save it in some table, such that the next time that I'm coming, I don't need to recompute it. And that's, that cause actually becomes from exponential time to become polynomial time because you save this information. In greedy, uh, the difference between this one is that uh, you have some choices in the backtracking, you will try both choices or in the branch and bound or you will try all possibilities. In greedy, say that, okay, I don't want to do both possibilities. I will choose one of them. And I think this one, I know for sure that's the best choice. The other one, I don't need to even run the algorithm because I can prove that that actually is a good thing. Then your algorithm becomes faster. So this is a general idea of algorithm design about the recursion that you can do it. Also another interesting thing even, so in some sense while and recursion, these are the same thing as well. While you have a loop, recursion you have a loop as well. So what do we have in a while? In a while you have some conditions, so like say that, uh, so, uh, so the people on Zoom, do you see the page, the recurrence relation? Yes. Great. Yeah. So here, when you have a while, I mean, you have some while loop, and you have some condition here. And I don't know. This is like some end of the while that you may see it by indenting Python, or you may do it essentially but with curly bracket in C plus plus or Java or others. Uh, but uh, anyhow, so in the while loop, you are just repeating something. The same thing you are doing also, you can, instead of while, you can do it with recursion. Recursion is doing exactly the same thing. You will call this function again and again to some parameter i, so y, you generally have some kind of counter. So this counter, you will just increase, 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 or you decrease, decrease, decrease. Not much difference essentially until some condition. It, so you will say that while this condition satisfied, while uh, this is exactly when this condition is not uh, essentially is violated, that's the time that you are ending the recursion. So in some sense, while and recursion are the same thing. As, and if you think this way, a program that is written in terms of like a recursive thing, actually you can turn it as while and vice versa. Good. So this is a general thing. In some sense, while is everything. This you have condition and you have the loop. That's the, almost everything that you needed for programming. Of course, some other constant things you can do it. Some assignments, some other things you can do it. But everything else almost is this concept of programming. And this is the part that induction plays a very important thing because whenever you have this counter, whenever you have a recursion, in the recursion, as I mentioned, because of the it is the same as loop, you have some kind of counter. It might be some of some values, but you have some kind of counter that you do it, and that's the part that you can do induction. Good. Now, what do we want to uh, uh, talk here? We want to talk about the recurrence relations. Sometimes it would be, I mean, uh, in some sense, you can have a more complicated while loop. Uh, or uh, one other thing, uh, by the way, you may have a while inside while. So you may have a, a, like a few files inside each other. That is again something that the recursion can do it. In a recursion, you may have several parameters that you will recurse on each of them. So a recurrence is somehow, I will say more generally is a few loops inside each other. Now, uh, for this one, I, we want to have some uh, 
you can try to analyze there, but somebody maybe give some recurrence function to you for the running time of the algorithm that we are using. And then we want to see what would be the running time of this algorithms if it is given in terms of recursion. So everything in some sense induction and loop, but it's a different form. Sometimes if you, in some sense, yes, everyone can get it from the loop, but sometimes maybe there are some steps in recurrence functions that, or in recurrence that if we solve them, we can uh, do it more efficiently. There are You don't need to go all the way to loops to do that. There are some tools that we can do it at a higher level and still solve the problem. Does it make sense? And great. Okay, so let's start now with the, uh, this is the recurrence function and this is the way essentially that we can define a function in that. This is the, probably the most famous thing is the Fibonacci numbers. These are the most famous uh, recurrence relations. Uh, so, here, I mean, that's, how many of you have heard uh, about Fibonacci numbers? The people at uh, Zoom, please raise your hand if you, if you don't know Fibonacci numbers or have not heard about it. Maybe I should, this is a negative thing. And this is also another interesting thing. Again, I think these are, I, I will say that these are, might be beyond this class as important. When you put the questions, I think this is also, there are some studies about it. Like if you want to put some question or something, you want to get data, et cetera. It's as often is good to put a positive tone on it. So if you say that, I mean, like for example, raise your hand if you don't know the recurrence. This is something, it is some kind of negative things. So the people may hesitate to say, no, I don't know that. But if you say, I mean, if you know that, then that person, okay, if you know, you will mention it. If not, you don't feel that much bad about it. This is also important. Like in the email that you are sending to others, this is very important. If you somehow imply, I mean, uh, try to, I mean, give it more positive tone if you can. Uh, you get a better answer. But anyhow, so come back to this one. So this is the Fibonacci numbers uh, that it says that, I think there are lots of uh, stories about it. Uh, and there are lots of, I mean, these are like almost an ancient, uh, I mean, numbers and things, formula. So this is F of N is equal to uh, F of N minus one plus F of N minus two. And I think this is something that they were talking about the number of, uh, rabbits in a, like Australia or some of these similar stories that you can say that, and I will say why it is important. So this is like a case. So this is zero, one. It's a very nice way of doing that for this sequence. Zero, one would be one. One plus one is equal to two. One plus two is equal to three. Two plus three is equal to five and so on and so forth. And the interesting thing is that soon you become exponentially large. That's the important thing about this Fibonacci number. Any questions so far? Good. So uh, here we should have almost enough information to obtain f of n. That's that is essentially the thing. If you have, if you write a recursive program, and some cases you will go go some cases that you have not figured it out there. If you use, I mean, a different language, like for example, if you use Pascal, you will get a stack overflow or like Python or C, you never get an answer. That generally, because it goes to some cases that has not been set it up. So always it is important that when you do this kind of recursion, all cases should be caught up in there. All if should be considered. Like it should be not the case that you are doing some parameter N and this N can become negative at some point. And you didn't check that always N should be greater than zero. So at some point it becomes minus one. If it goes minus one, then it becomes minus two. It goes to minus infinity. You never get an answer. That's the thing that you need to design. So in some sense, we should count all the base cases. That's the thing that is very important for this. Anyhow, so if we can for f of n, if the f of n, this is the, you will compute the f of n based on just summing up the two previous numbers. Uh, then uh, this is the way essentially uh, for, uh, uh, good. So uh, when we have this f of n, the issue that to compute f of n, here the nth number 
if you want to do it, you need a linear time to go there, correct? You need to essentially compute this one. You want to sometime maybe do it more efficiently. Uh, like we mentioned, we discussed before that exponentiation of to power of n can be done in log n. We discussed previous time. And this is the one that we, I think we, you mentioned actually that the, the TLC actually do, do think this, this already is implemented, you want to exponentiate. Instead of doing a for loop of size n, you can do it log n. So you can write this number in binary number and you can do that way. Uh, however, uh, so in that case, it would be more efficient if we have a closed form. Closed form is the one that is not recursive, and I will get it. So this is the formula that you may have it actually for f of n. <laughs> it is uh, this number, it is phi number. This, uh, it is called golden ratio. So this is very famous, essentially, Fibonacci number, also because of the relation to phi. This is the psi. So this is phi and this is psi, and this is the golden ratio. This is the famous things. Again, lots of books you can read it. There are books even about that. This appears in lots of places. It is like pi. We have a pi day. So in some sense, you can have a phi day uh, or you can have a psi day as well. These are famous numbers. Uh, good. So, and you can say that f of n is always is equal to this. The question is that, okay, why, I mean, how can I get it? So how can I get from this form <laughs> to this formula? And I mentioned this one, you can actually compute it in log n, order log n. You can compute f of n because you need to have just exponentiation. Here, you need order n. Okay. Yes. Yes. Hey, great. So he's actually asking that, yes, I mean, if you want to actually compute f of n, why does it take even order n? Because here, this is actually f of n minus one is equal to f of n minus one plus f of n minus two. You need to compute this one. And you're right. Actually, that's exactly the thing that we want to say that. If you want to do it in this naive way that we, for f of n, you compute it from f of n minus one and f of n minus two, then you need to see what would be the running time of this. Actually, the running time would be exponential. So then how come I will say order n? This is exactly the point that I have mentioned earlier. For the backtracking algorithm or recursive, this is the technique that we can make it dynamic programming using the memoist technique. What is the memoist? Essentially, we memorize the things. So if you compute it f of n minus one and f of n minus two, just save it in an array. We only compute each one only one time. That's the thing that the running time becomes order n from this expo. As you see, that is exponential. Actually, if you want to do the compute things, if you don't do it this kind of memoist approach, the running time indeed is exponential. And if you have some algorithm with such a running time, it is, it is like essentially, disastrous because it takes forever to answer. But this is the memo technique that we can do it. And this is generally is the case that if this number of parameters that we have are small, we can often, we can save it in an array. If the number of them are large, we cannot have all possibilities because the memory would be exchanged. Yes. Good, so far. Uh, great. So let me. Good. So how can we solve this uh, recursive formula? And how can we essentially get uh, from this uh, Fibonacci number that f of n is equal to f of n minus one plus f of n minus two, we can get f of n equal to uh, sigma to the uh, like phi to the n minus psi to the n over square root of phi. How can we get this? So this is essentially the things that we are talking about here. So there are several approaches here to do these things. Uh, one of them is uh, this approach of uh, guessing and playing. So this guessing and playing, I mean, this is something. The other techniques that are, are there are substitution and expanding. We will talk about this kind. Good. There are these general techniques, guessing and working. This guessing actually is give you some ideas about it. But, and of course, a combination of them. So sometimes we guess, 
some of these. Sometimes we are using some techniques that came out of guessing others. Some, sometimes we are using substitution and sometimes we are using expanding it. And these are the techniques that we want to talk here. So uh, let's see, for example, this case. Uh, <coughs> Say this is the formula that we have it. A0 is equal to K and AN is equal to R times AN minus one. Good. Then in this case, actually, you can just you can do expanding it, try to write it. So if A0 is this one, then what is A1? A1 is equal to R times A0, correct? This is the one. Then R2 is equal to R, A2 is R to the two times K and AN is equal to this. So you can just essentially you are using expansions or uh, like substitution actually in this case, you can do it. Now, what about if you have such a formula like this? If it is a n minus one plus a p times n minus two, note that actually uh, this Fibonacci is in this form. Of course, I will write it f of n. This is like you can write f of n, which is equal to f of n. Good. Great. Uh, now, uh, how can I do uh, these things essentially? Good. Uh, so uh, how can I do that? I mean, uh, this is again some guess. So from the previous case, we know that a n is equal to r something. Let's say, I mean, without the previous guess, this was only one a n. Here we have both of them. The question is that can we use both of them essentially to get their products? Good. So uh, here, let's put uh, a n equal to r to the n. If you put it r to the n, you will put it r to the n here, then it is equal to this plus this. Then you can just cancel out this r n minus two, and then you will come to this formula. If you solve, this is the equation of uh, degree two. If you solve it, you will get two roots, R1 and R2. And it is easy to see that. If you get R1 and R2, C times R1 to the N and D times R to the R to the two to the N. And it did some of these guys. This is the, any, the linear combination of these two guys. Also a good solution for this recurrence formula that you had it here. So this is the people that try and they say, oh, this is, if you get these roots, the roots are working, but even if the, uh, uh, not only the roots are working, C times these roots also working, constant times this working. Even if you combine them as a, in a linear form, it works. And interestingly, this one, if R if R1 is not equal to R2, this is the formula, CR1, this plus CR2. But sometimes it might be the case that R1 and R2 are the same. So it has only essentially, uh, like, uh, so there are not two roots in some sense. There is only one root. In that case, it is easy actually to see that C times, uh, so like on a, one of them essentially becomes negative or something like this, not useful. So in that case, this is the case that you can say C times R1 to the N plus D times Rn, R1 to the N, that actually is also a good formula for this. If R1 is equal to, when you solve this equation. So what is the general form? And so the question is that, okay, what about if we have C and D? For which C and D you can get the results? This C and D actually, you can get it from the base of the induction. So in general, what is this one? So you have been, whenever you have this, whenever you have the formula like this, such a formula always you need to, if you are depending on two variables before, then you need to have two base cases. That is important. If you have only one base case, it means that you are missing something. Because here, if we have only A0, then what about, a, so if it, somebody does not given you A1, then you have it A1 here is equal to A times A of N minus one, which is A of zero, it is given to you, plus B times, 
a of n minus two, which is a minus one. If you have such a things in the formula, this goes forever. Because you need to also define what is a one, what is a zero, and what is a one actually in this case. Because if you write, if I try to write a formula for a one, then I will go to a minus one, and then a minus one is not defined, and that is bad. So here, if you have if you dependence in two previous variables, also you need to define the two variables as the base case. So that's essentially the whole idea. So you can get this formula from this C and so you know that so for example this Fibonacci thing that we had so we had it f of n is equal to f of n minus one plus f of n minus two so then we, from this one we have these things that essentially so you will find uh, two roots of this r2 would be equal to <clears throat> r plus one from this formula that I have explained it here. This actually, if you split, these are the phi and side would be the roots that you are obtaining here. Then as I mentioned, that would be uh, like phi to the n c times this plus d times psi to the n. These are the solutions that you have it. The only issue that what are c and what are d? To get this one, you, you can just put it this one. This, uh, it, it comes from two formulas. It should have it F0 and F1 here. You, can, you need to have both of them. If you have F0 and F1, uh, so, and we know that F0 is zero and F1 is, so this is equal to zero and this is equal to one. So I will just put the formula. I will put a zero here. So it would be a C times, uh, this phi to the n would be one plus d because that also would be one. That would be equal to zero. When I put n equal to zero, and when I put so this is n equal to zero, and this is the base case of induction. Now I have also n equal to one case, and then in this case would be I mean just put it one. So in that case would be one would be equal to. Uh, C times phi plus D times phi. You will solve these equations. This is, this is important. You have, you have two equations, two unknowns, C and D. You will solve them, and then you will get C and D. So when you have C and D, this constant that you are computing from this base case, Then you will compute it, and then you have the closed form for f of n. So f of n would be something like for this value of c and d. Is it clear? So this is the way that you can solve it. I mean, so if you have, uh, so this is more general than that. So uh, you can actually solve this one if a n is given in this formula. So not only depends on the two previous numbers, but also depends on the k previous number. But again, in this case, you will do that. You will just solve this one. You will put these equations R to the N. You will cancel out. You will find the roots of these polynomials. And then the only issue is that then you have this, instead of this C and D, you have C1, C2 to CK. But then the number of variables here, the coefficients of this would be k number. But then you, I mentioned that if you are given such a thing, you need to given k basis of the induction. So you need to know what is a0, a2 to ak, or like ak minus one. That should be given to you. These are, you have k unknowns. So these k unknowns are the coefficients that you have it for this. Uh, this essentially these are the things that we discuss here, and you have k equations because of these k knowns that you have it. K equations, k unknowns. You can solve it, and uniquely you can find this. Solution. Does it make sense? So this is more general. If it depends on three numbers, then you are giving three things. Then you have three coefficients, and then three equations, and then you can. Solve. Yeah. 
and it seems like you could go with how it's easier to do that to find the part of the farm or the part of the one to the part of the D times R like yeah. I mean, you, you can just put it there. I mean, that you can actually do that. So if this, you can see that, I mean, if this is like the things, you, uh, you can say that if my form is R to the N, this satisfies this property. I mean, that's easy. I mean, just put this one, R1 to the N. Uh, I mean, this essentially comes from by definition. If, you, if R1 is a root of this, you can just multiply both of them essentially by uh, R times N to the N minus two, you have these equations. This is the form, this is the same form as this guy, correct? So in some sense, you can go backward. It's get the R1, since the R1 satisfies this, these equations, then you will put, it, so you can just multiply both terms by Rn minus two, you have this one. So this is a solution for this case. <laughs> because I mean, this is the issue that if you have C time, if you, you can multiply both term by C. <coughs> Correct? If, the, if you have this equation, C times that also works for C. And not only C times that, you can have actually two roots. You can see that also D times that also works. And if, you, if this works for C, this works for D, you can sum it up. And then you can say that C times R1 plus C times R2 all two parts. Sometimes you will write it for C. Sometimes you will do it for D for the other roots. And then you will sum it up. It works such. So this comes somehow from backward things. But actually, this is the way to solve these equations. You can actually think more about this recursive thing. And these are the unique things that people worked on it. But this is somehow the summary thing. So one way is easy that why this is the unique solution that's that's hard, but why this is a solution is not hard. Does it make sense? So we say that why these forms essentially just take it backward and then you can solve it. Any questions? <clears throat> Good. So <clears throat> No, that I mean this actually you can do it actually more than that. So uh, this is uh, uh, you can uh, see this one and you can prove some other formulas. These are the other techniques that I'm talking about. That was a very general technique to solve this equation, but there are some other ways. Sometimes these uh, these are like the things that we have it or something like this. This is I just want to give the examples here. So this is proof by expansion. So for example, you have a n is equal to a n plus an minus one plus n, correct? Let me just make it bigger so that you can actually see. Yeah. So you have a n is equal to a n minus one plus n, correct? In this case, I can do it proof by expansion. So what is proof by expansion? Just expand it. So you have a n is equal to. Okay. So uh, now uh, here, proof by expansion. So you will just have this formula. So just replace it. So a n is equal to this one. So let's instead of a n put it by expansion. A n minus one is equal to a n minus two plus this. Correct. And then you will repeat it. If you do it, you will see that, oh, this formula actually becomes a zero plus one plus two plus two n. We knew this formula before by induction that this is equal to n times n plus one over two. Good. So it means that a n and say a zero is equal to k. So that would be k plus this. This is the closed form that you can do. Another one, actually, this is more interesting one that we talk about. It. Let's talk about this one, which is actually more interesting. So some, I mean, this is actually this a n. This is the one that we will talk more about it. This is the running time. Uh, this is the running time that we have it for.
here. <coughs> So we have this formula here. An is equal to this one. Good. Now this is actually the this is a proof by a substitution. This is the formula that later we will see that this is the running time of merge sort. This is an um, important sort and this is the things. But let's see I mean, how can we do it. This is formula given to you and this is a2 is equal to is given to. So sometime in the running time of the algorithm, we have so this might be the general formula. A n is less than this one. It's not equality, but when it is equality is given to you, you want to see what is the order of this. First, you let's make it equality. So these are the things that you will do it. This is the general idea. First, you try to essentially, sometimes the guesswork is there. You try to, okay, it is less than equal. Let me put it equal, solve it. When you have it, when you have the idea that what would be the solution for, then actually you can use that one and use induction to come and prove actually even for less than or equal things. But for now, the running time of the algorithm might be less than or equal, but I will just make it equal and say this is a key. <coughs> and also it might be the case here, the running time is actually is not N over two. N over two would be non-integer if N is odd. Let's drop also this case and make it, I mean, say this is the formula. So here we are doing the guesswork. Guesswork, you try to simplify whatever uh, and however you can. Good. Now, uh, this is the, so this is the formula that I have. <coughs> what do I do after that? So again, less work. So I have a n equal to two times a n over two plus n, correct? Now, uh, so for this formula, so this is the a n. that I have it. So I have this a n is equal to a n over two plus n. Good. Now, again, assume, of course, n is not, if n is even, this is not a very good formula. Assume that also n is equal to two to the k. These are all somehow guess this work plus substitution that we will use it later. But say simplify, simplify. Well, I want to get some ideas. When you know that what would be the formula, then you can think this should be the form of the, the same thing that we had it for Rn. You see, remember that we said, okay, the roots of this polynomial should work. We are just simplified it. And then we say, okay, if we have it, then, then I will substitute in the formula and say, actually this works for this formula. And that's the part that we use induction. So what do we do here? So here, let's put n equal to two to the k. And then of course, in this case, k would be log n. Good, k is the power. So then uh, this formula that I have it would be in terms of this would be just, I will replace it. Instead of n, I will pay two to the k and instead of n over two becomes two to the uh, k minus one. Good. Here I'm using the substitution methods. Let's define another formula, bk, which is equal to two times bk minus one plus two k. How can I do that? So I, this is actually the actual substitution. So I will just put, define bk to be equal to a to the two to the k. Good. So in some sense, again, I don't care about the values of n if n is not two to the k. Of course, you can define it because uh, k you can define as a log of that. But if it is not integer, it might have a problem. But say we are considering in this form, so I can define bk is equal to be equal to this. So in this one, b1 actually would be equal to a2. This is substitution. And this formula, this formula above would be this. It would be bk is equal to two times bk minus one plus two to the k. Correct? Now let's use the formula. So I know that a n is equal to a two to the k. That is by definition. I mean, I assume that n is equal to two to the k. This is a somehow replace n with by two to the k, where k is log n. Then this is by definition and the substitution is equal to b k. This formula that I had it was equivalent to this. So b k is equal to two times b k minus one plus two k. You see from this formula that was n over two or something, I came to, like instead of uh, here, I had division. Here I have subtractions. Subtractions are generally easier to solve than division. Good. 
So I have two times BK minus one. Good. So I will just replace it. No, no, I will just do this kind of the expansion formula. So BK minus one is equal to two times BK minus two plus two to the K minus. So I just replace that formula with this one. I will, instead of PK, I will put this formula. Then I will simplify it. So that would be two times two times BK minus two. And then it would be two times two K minus one, which is two to the K plus two to the K that I had it before. So I have two to the two times BK minus two plus two to the K plus two to the K, correct? Now, again, let's replace it this one, get some ideas more about it. BK minus two is equal to two times BK minus three plus two to the K minus three. Good. I just put in the recursion formula. And I, again, I will expand it. Instead of BK minus two, I will put these values. So you will do a few of them to see how is it going essentially. This is the game. So you will put this one. That will be two times this. So then what is that one? Here before we had uh, two times. Uh, so before. So uh, before I had this formula that it is, this was two times two to the K, correct? That I have it here. Let's expand this one. So this guy becomes two to the two times two. So I have two to the three times BK minus three. Here I have two to the two times two to the K minus two. So if you multiply this one, that would be these two together would be two to the K again. I have two to the K here and two to the two times two to the K here. So I have three times two to the K. I will just repeat this formula. The formula actually turns out to be this thing. So I will just expand it. It turns out the formula becomes just, I will guess. So okay, I know that this is two to the three times BK to the three. So I can say that essentially it would be two to the K minus one times B one plus K minus one to the two to the K minus. Good. Now, now that I have it hit here, now just replace back. So I want to, K is some parameter that I have introduced. Let it go back to N. I just write all this formula in terms of N. So that would be the B1 was equal to A2. I will just replace it. And this is still, I have this one. A2, I had some values for that. What was two to the K? Two to the K essentially was N over two. And then K was log N. So it, this formula essentially it becomes this formula. This becomes, n over two plus log n minus one times again, two to the k minus two becomes n over two. And actually here I had it a2, a2 was equal to two. So it would be this times a2, but because it was two also this becomes, this cancel out, it becomes n. So this is my formula and this is the formula, the final formula that I have. So I got it a n is equal to n over two times log n plus one. Good. Is it clear so far? Yeah. Uh, I mean, this is the definition. See? N is equal to two to the K, correct? Yeah. N over two is equal to two to the K minus one. Good, clear. So that's the thing that, that from this formula, I will put, I get this formula. So two to the K minus one is equal to N over two. And then I have it A two times that A two was equal to two. So that would be essentially. Clear? The people at Zoom, does it make sense? Please unmute and answer. Yes. See, that's actually the beauty of this that I can have the written things plus I can write it on top of that uh, and I can erase them. Because if I want to write this one again, it takes time actually. 
the, the things. And uh, now, and I may do some mistakes and then everything becomes essentially confused. But now I have written it, I just explain it and I can have further explanation also with this. Good, so now you got this one, I just clear everything. This is the one that I can do it in my paper. Uh, good. Now, we have computed this formula so far. So we say that, okay, if a n is equal to this, uh, if a n is equal to this, then we get this formula for it. However, the actual formula that we had it for running time was not this. Uh, so it was actually, this was also, it was not n, it was not a power of two even. So we had this one, a n is less than a n over two. This is a ceiling of n over two plus n, good. I want to, this one that I got it, I have done some simplification to get it. What about the actual running time? I didn't quite get the formula for that. This is the one that now I will come here and I will do the work essentially. Now that I know that, I know that, okay, the formula should be something like this. So the formula that a n should be something like this, but of course, this is for the case that n is over to power of two to the k or something like this. What about if n is not like that? Now, uh, here, so I have essentially this formula that I know I want to solve. Good. I know that for some cases, special cases, I can get it this, but what about for this one? This is not, n might be not power of two to the k or something like this. Here, this is the thing. Now that I have it, I have somehow guesswork. I can go and do this one. I assume that, okay, a n in this formula should be less than or equal to C times N times like N for some constancy. I don't know what is this constancy. I will get it through induction. This is my guess. I want to see whether the induction works or not. Good. Now I'm working with general N. Good. Uh, let's, I mean, do this one. So I will put this one for some constancy here. Let's put the basis of induction. So basis, we know that A2 is equal to two, which is, I can say that N, what is N is equal to here N and say a log of N. And whenever we say that log, we generally mean base two essentially. So here uh, log base two of N would be one, N would be two. So in that case, uh, it would be two should be less than C times two times one. It would be less than two C. So the only condition that I have it here, so this will be correct if C is greater than or equal to. So this is one condition that I will get it for C from the base case. Clear so far? Good. <clears throat> Let me clear everything again. Now, and again, this is the formula that we want to do it. So this one, the formula that we had it, we had it a n less than or equal to two times a of ceiling of n over two plus n. This is the formula that we want. Now let's go and do this, these things. Now uh, let's see for, this is the induction hypothesis. So by induction hypothesis, I know that a n, a n of ceiling of n over two is less than C times n over two ceiling of that, log of ceiling of n over two. Good, for some constancy. So this constancy actually, we can do it backward. So we will go there, see what are the conditions on C. When we have all the conditions on C, then we can put C that equal exactly that number that we want, and then say that the whole thing works. So for this C, we can just see what are the conditions. As long as we can satisfy the conditions of C, we should be fine. Okay, so let's have this formula. So A N is equal to, I mean, is less than or equal to this formula. This is the one that we had it here. So this is this formula. So this, this is less than, I will just replace this guy. This, I can have it by induction hypothesis. So I will just replace that formula here. I will put this one two times C of ceiling of N over two plus N, good. Now, here, what do I get? I get two times C, a ceiling of N over two is less than over two, and the log of ceiling of this is less than log of two of that. 
plus n. Correct? This is the part that I get rid of the ceiling. Now, I will just write this formula. So just, I mean, just factor essentially n. So it would be Cn log of n my, log of n over two is equal to uh, log of n over two is equal to log of n minus one. So this is the formula of log. You should be familiar with this. I mean, you should, these are the, some of the things that you should go log and you know what is log. We are doing a lot with log. So, so this, I will just replace it. So instead of, so that is two times C of N over two, I will cancel out these guys. Instead of this log N, I will write this formula here. And then N part, I will just write N. Clear? So this would be equal to Cn log n minus Cn. I will just expand this formula. And this, this formula, okay. So uh, this is, okay. So this is the formula that I want to show them. So this is the one that I will obtain it. What did I want to show by induction? I wanted to say that Cn, that was the induction part that I want to do it. So I will just write this part here. I want to say that, so I know that a n, uh, so a n, is less than this if I use the induction hypothesis. And I want to show that it is less than C n log n. This condition is satisfied as long as C was equal to one. Good. Be why? Because this guy, of course, is less than that. If C is greater than one, this guy always would, this would be the dominant term with this guy. So I can just essentially say this is the more negative that I have it than n. So I can just say that this, you can remove them, both of them, and say that this is less than this. So it turns out that the condition that I have it here, C greater than or equal one, is exactly the same condition that I had it here. So then I can put actually C greater than or equal one. So if you want to actually to make sure that everything is fine, then I will replace it. I will say that now I will put A n is equal to, instead of this C, I will replace it with one. You can actually replace it with two even. But we try to get the tightest answer, so we get C equal to one. Now you will write the induction, there is no C anymore. Everything is clean, and you can say that, yes, you get this one if you write this one. So if C is equal to one, then actually this will cancel out this guy, then it will be C. So this works for induction, essentially for any C greater than. Clean, clear. So this is the formula actually that we will have it. Uh, and uh, oh, one, one other thing, we had some guesswork here. So we had assumed that this one. And here we, can, we obtain for base case and this kind. In general, when you try to do this guessing, you put some constant because you don't know. Because the issue that, I mean, may, maybe some C is needed here. I mean, maybe C is enough. Maybe sometimes, uh, okay. So you may get these conditions. It might turn out here, you may write for some other formula. And then it turns out C is less than actually, you will get some condition like C less than zero. Less than or equal to zero. If we get this condition for some other formulas, not here then means that this condition and these two are contradictions. If this happens that C is greater than or equal to one, and here it happens that C is less than or equal to zero, then what is the meaning of that? It means that there's a contradiction. Maybe it means that your guess was not. So it means that maybe you need to have another D here, maybe add something D here. So it is C n log n plus some D. Then that D, for example, that can help you. And then again, you will put these conditions for C and D. At the end, C, can you find a solution for this C and D? If you, there is some solution for that, that essentially means that the, you can, of course, write it again to make sure everything is fine. But generally, as long as these conditions are not contradictory, it means that you're, you can just find some C that satisfies this or C and D. Sometimes you may need to do it. Maybe this is instead of D, you need to also have it DN to see if it's needed. 
to get the exact formula. But these are the guesswork. You will guess it. If it works, then it works. If not, you may need to change it. And the only way to get actually this one correct is to uh, doing it more exercise to see what are these guesswork that you need to do. Good. And as I mentioned, this formula that I have it, I mean, this is actually the formula C of n over two things. This, uh, this is the case that if this is a merge sort, so this is some kind of divide and conquer that we were taught more about it. So if you want to merge an array of size and if you want to sort it, one way is that sort, I mean, first take the, uh, these are the, take, divide it into two parts. We cannot do it n over two because if n is odd, then we cannot divide it. So we can get the floor and ceiling. That's the thing that we often use it. So then we need to sort this guy, the first part and the second part, and then we will merge it. The merge part would be essentially order n or some constant time cn. Doesn't matter. So this is the this and essentially this formula that I have mentioned. So the running time of the merge sort would be something like this. So the a n would be less than or equal to a of n ceiling of n over two plus uh, a of uh, Sorry, I mentioned actually ceiling. Uh, so this, I meant floor actually in all of them. Because, so this is n over two. I just miss a spot. Plus order, say plus n, for example. This is the running time of merge sort. But again, you can see that this guesswork that you have done it here, if you put that guesswork here, if we turn this n over two, the floor to, uh, the floor, it turns to n over two, the ceiling it became like n over two and still you can actually do the same thing do this simplification this, this would be the final form but when you have the final form then you just put it here and see that actually there are some c's so that would be n like good so always try to this is the general way try to i mean do this one when you have ceiling or floor that we have a lot uh, again i mentioned ceiling to uh, called Mrs. Spoken instead of floor I mentioned ceiling. But uh, anyhow, either of them, you just replace it with n over two, you will uh, generally assume that n is the power of two to the k or some simplification. You will get some formula. Try to simplify as much as possible such that you can get this guesswork here. This was the guesswork here. Then you have it, then you will generalize it. Maybe, okay, this is some constancy. Maybe actual thing is not this some c times that. Then you will write the induction because this come from the formula, generally, now that you write the equation, you should have lots of advantages because somehow it came from that simplification. Then you will do that. You will put the conditions for C, and then that gives us the result that you want. Do you have a question? Yeah. Yeah. Two times a, the floor. Yes, I mean, but again, as I mentioned, so we talked about the floor versus ceiling, but I mentioned, you remember that I replaced the floor with the n over two, correct? Yeah. Here, you can replace both of them with n over two. Then you will get that formula. I mean, this, that, 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 this is the guesswork part. You will get the formula when you got it here, essentially, then you will come to this formula that should be C times log n. Now, if you have it here, you have it, what was that? Would be a n of plus plus this one. So that would be C times n log n. And this is uh, this floor and ceiling. But the floor and ceiling, you can actually sum it up at this step and do everything. So simplify at the end, you need to get the formula to get it. So these are like some of the people, for example, they write the paper, they may do that. They may essentially do this work here. So this is the way, sometimes you will see, oh, this guy, they prove this one is less than that. How did they put these numbers correctly and end again? Actually, they have done this simplification. This is something that they have done it for their own. They didn't write the paper. They get the formula. Now that they have the formula, you are, they just put this formula here. And then sometimes they say, okay, C is some kind of thing that we, decide, that we define later. But sometimes, again, they may work out and say with which kind of thing people. And they just show you. So if you see the final thing, it's not clear how did they obtain it. But because they have done these simplifications that we are doing a lot. So sometimes we are doing this is first we are trying to get the, somehow the answers. 
then when we don't the answer, then we can write it much nicer and cleanly. But for a person who reads it, he can verify it, but does not understand how do you obtain it. That's the way that we have both of them and we can. This is the way essentially to solve it. Does it make sense? So the people that do, do you have any questions? So if there is no question, I think that we are ending the Zoom here. Thanks for everyone, and then see you later.